Hi folks, I want to share a completely uh, contrived example of a problem that's similar to the kinds of things we'll be doing in in lab, but it's different from any of the actual labs we're doing, so that means I'm not going to be divulging any any secrets or anything, and I won't be ruining your chance to figure things out for yourselves. But it, it gives you an example that you can use as a starting point um, for some of the projects we'll be doing. So I'm going to pop an Arduino in here, just like we had last time. And it's just a totally dumb circuit, but let's just do it. I'll have a, one resistor, another resistor, and a capacitor. So, and the idea is this, these resistors are going to form a divider. So let's, uh, let's take our PWM output again. And I'm just going to pop it over here, and we'll be driving this guy with that. This guy's going to connect to that guy. This guy is going to connect back to ground. So I'm going to let's set up power and ground just for completeness. Uh, power and ground, and then I'll just copy these guys up here to make sure we have power supply rails that make sense. Okay. So this is a divider, and the voltage here in the middle, in principle, should be, um, you know, uh, if it were just these two resistors, the ratio of the voltage drops across the two resistors would equal the ratio of the resistances. So if there are two equal resistors, this would be half. Whatever this PWM is, um, this would be half. So uh, what I want to do, though, is to add a capacitor here. So what's that going to do? I'm going to put a capacitor here and then connect the other end to ground. So what we have now, it's still a divider, but one side of the, the bottom of the divider um, is actually a parallel combination of a resistor and a capacitor. So what that means is it's a divider whose bottom uh, impedance now, it's a combination of a resistor and a capacitor, depends on frequency. So at DC, that capacitor acts like an open circuit, and it's just a simple resistive divider. So at DC, we know the voltage at this point uh, is going to, or in steady state, you can think of it as a steady state, in steady state, assuming the output of the PWM is a fixed number, um, then this thing is going to be half, if the two resistors are equal, this would be half of the output of the PWM. Um, but what the capacitor does is it, it means that voltage is going to vary, and um, with time, so it's going to need to charge up and discharge and so on. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this is to give us a non-trivial case where we can measure the uh, voltage somewhere as a function of time. So I'm, I'm just going to grab um, A0. I'm going to connect to the output of the PWM. Um, A1, I'm going to measure the voltage at the junction. Those are the only two interesting voltages in the, in the problem. Um, <clears throat> and then the idea is let's turn on the PWM at like a 50% duty cycle, and then let's just measure the, the voltage there. So uh, let's do it. Let's just do it. Um, I'm going to set the code here, switch over to text, and uh, let's, what do I need? I'm going to need uh, pound define. PWM is 3. I'm going to pound define uh, the top as, what is that, A0. I'll pound define the bottom, or I'll call it the middle. That's A1. Mm, okay, and then uh, we'll make sure PWM is an output, so I'm going to place that there. And uh, all I'm going to do, let's, let's say, uh, actually, I'm going to leave this here. We'll, we'll, save, we'll save this for when we're done. And then uh, I'm going to write a for loop for i equals 0. I less than what? Um, 100 say I plus plus 
<coughs> oh, I need to set the analog. Let's set the PWM output. We're going to say analog right PWM 127. That'll give us a 50% duty cycle, right? And uh, what I'll do here is just <coughs> let's read those two voltages. So int t equals millis. That gives us the current time. Int vt equals log vt ah, vt equals analog read um, vt vb equals analog read v, oh, it's called vm sorry m uh, these are ints I'm gonna just all the bits here. And then we're just going to print them out. So I'll say uh, serial.print vt. Uh, let's turn on the serial. Serial port. Don't forget that. Um, actually, let's print t first. And let's put this inside the loop so we have it. So we'll serial print t and we'll uh, serial dot print uh, comma. Then I'm going to serial dot print the top. I'll print another comma. Then I'm going to print uh, serial dot print line the end. <clears throat> okay, and uh, then when we're done, I'm just going to say while one, do all this stuff. So what happens is when it's finished, um, it'll just flash the built-in LED. Of course, I've got to leave that here then. Okay, so it's just going to run through the loop once, it's going to read a bunch of voltages, and it's going to print them out. So let's run it. Close this guy, open up the serial monitor, and you can see we've got a bunch of values there. Um, okay. Uh, it's jumping all over the place. Probably that's because my capacitor is too small. So let me bump up this. It starts with a pretty darn small capacitor. Let's make it a 100 microfarad instead of a 100. Okay, that looks better. And the numbers don't really matter. You know, it's jumping all over the place. That's okay. I don't really care. Um, what am I? Why am I doing this? So that's the question. Uh, and notice it's flashing the. LED now, so that means we finished. I'm going to stop the simulation. I'm just going to grab some of this data. I'm going to put it in a file. Let's see, I need to actually copy it. Copy that guy. Paste it in a file. It's just data. Okay, so I'm just going to say data.csv. And what I want to do is bring it over into Deep note. So let's pop over to Deep Note, make a new project, and we're going to call it uh, Data Stuff. Okay. I'm going to make a new code block. We're going to import pandas as PD. Let's see. Let's close this. I'm going to import mat plot lib dot pi plot as plt. Okay. Run that cell. And then I'm going to grab that data that we just got. Uh, where is it? It's here. Data.csv. Let's put it over in 
notebook, perfect. I'm going to say df equals pandas.read uh, data.csv. We'll display the data frame. Uh, oh, read CSV. And oh, fooey. I forgot something. I need to put header, a header on the CSV file. So let's say T, the top, the middle. Then that. <coughs> let's drag it over there again. I don't know what this is going to do. Okay. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to rename this one. Let's just rename it. Data.csv. Okay. And then uh, let's go back to our notebook. And let's try this again. Okay. So now we have named columns because I have a header there. Um, and you'll notice I've got all these crazy numbers. Uh, let's do a df.plot. And what df.plot does is it plots everything. So it's going to plot, uh, the blue is my time, that's just an ever-increasing number. The uh, voltage in the middle is the, what you call the voltage on the capacitor that's going up and down. And the voltage at the top is basically the PWM signal that's going between 0 and 5 volts all over the place. Um, and it's going fast, and my A to D is having trouble keeping up. So that's okay. My point is, what's my point? My point is we need to convert these things into values. So um, what I want to do is to convert the df.vt, that's the voltage at the top, to a voltage and put it in a variable like, like vt. So I'll say vt equals df.vt, but I know that it's 5 volts when the output of the A to D is 1023. So I, I just want to point out I can convert these things to actual voltages by um, just doing math. So vm is going to be df.vm times 5 over 1023. And of course the time is in milliseconds, so I could say uh, t is equal to df dot t divided by a thousand. And now I've got time in seconds, I've got vt in voltage, and I've got vm in um, in voltage. So now I can do an actual plot. I could say t comma vm, and I could uh, say I want to do blue dots, and it's actually it's actually going to show me. Um, Notice the voltage is always around 1.2 volts. It's kind of fluttering around in there. But that's actually volts, right? And then this is actually time. So this is in seconds. So um, if I want to connect the dots, I could say a blue line. That's going to be ugly as sin. But anyway, you get the idea. The point is, it's easy to get the data from the Arduino and then convert it into actual voltages and times using simple math. Okay? That's all I have for you right now.